but every hey, yo, I self lord and master. I'm from Brownsville, I saw a disaster. I last still. That pill might be your last. It's love that we don't have. So sad. Hey, yo, LAZ, man. That's one of my new joints called Psalm 71. If you want to hear that full song, send me a DM on Instagram at Real St. Laz and I'll shoot you over the lake. You're. And yo, after this interview, make sure you go check that legendary video from Cool G Rap and Jinx the Juvius called NYC. Leave a comment or three. Yeah, you got killed for a sneak. He was in the seventh grade. You know what I'm saying? I, he was in the seventh grade at 271 up the hill. He got killed for his bar please. That's why if I wouldn't have caught this case, I would have killed somebody or somebody would have killed me. At the pace that I was going, the space that I was at, and, and you on that type of time, and you front line, and no matter what, whether you're doing the music or not, you're just gangster rapper, street rapper, and this is what it is. This shit, this shit happened. This shit ain't nothing new. Jinx story ain't nothing new. And this shit, homie, this is word, man. I'm saying I see you and shit working, bro. That's what it is, bro. Yeah, bro, I've been grinding. I've been grinding for a few years with that YouTube shit, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's the best that work, nigga. You know what it is. I see what you're doing. You're doing what you're doing. Stay on it, boy. That's uh, a whole fact. But yeah, yeah, bro. I was just hitting you up to tell you, man, like, you know what I mean? If you really want to tell your story, because yeah. you know with this with this YouTube shit, bro, you know, I started off just telling my jail stories and shit. I ain't even really get to my life story yet. Yet, not me, yeah. but um you know, yeah. this shit turned into some real therapy shit for a lot of dudes. You feel what I'm right. saying? Like right. niggas just right. niggas just right. getting shit off their chest, talking about how they came up, you feel yeah. me, and how they ended up in the street. So, you know I can dig it. I can dig it. I can you know, dig it. But um, mother. Yeah, yeah, nah, bro. that's a you giving, you know what that is, that's a service, you giving niggas a, 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 a space, you feel what I'm saying, a space you creating, by you doing what you doing, you know what I'm saying, if you wasn't just doing what you doing, you, you sharing, you serving, you feel what I'm saying, I'm learning that now, it's some weird shit now on some other shit, but I know you done tap in and, and, and that's why you moving the way you moving, and Val moving the way he moving. So I'm already knowing, so like I'm saying, from the outside looking in, like you said, niggas telling their jail stories and all that, but outside of that, though, like, nigga really giving the nigga an avenue, you understand niggas be having that trauma or that, that those experiences, that, that shit, and, and that platform of social media and all that, it's, a, it's an avenue, so you provide, bro, that, that's, that's, that's a good thing, bro. Yeah, bro. Cause you know when dudes is in the streets, a lot of times it take it take a nigga to really go to the penitentiary a lot of times and do a yes, bit sir. just to yes, have sir. five minutes of mental clarity. Come you feel on, what I'm sir. saying? Yes. And you know, yes. rest in peace, my bro Chuck Burns, who just passed away. Son was from Dumont Brownsville Houses. He was Chuck the first Burns. dude. Yeah, son was the first dude that um put me on to your shit like you know i had just came Damn. home from the pen you know Damn. i had just came home from the pen of course i heard about your shit you know what i mean yeah, niggas done show me facebook son i want to see his facebook because that's real shit i want to see it but yeah what you're saying yeah nah yeah. son had gave me a e-dub mixtape so back like when i first so came home son gave me a e-dub yeah, mixtape dub was our joint we and was i'm like dub. yeah and i listened to that shit you know it was a bunch of brownsville niggas on the mixtape and you, and you was on there. You heard yeah, you was on yeah, there. That's what that. That was the, but the again, bro. Look, yeah. Even looking back, that was the, that was the service. That's, that's the reaching. That's the. I remember back, bro. That's how before I even got my deal, bro. I was on E Dub tapes. If it wasn't for getting on E Dub tapes, that stretched up. That played a part, bro. The mother son. E Dub was the first DJ to let me jump on a mixtape. That's crazy. Burst, that's a. For that, that was what that was major, bro. Yeah, but I heard oh, your shit. I heard your shit. I hit, I, I hit the bro Burns. I'm like, yo, son, who the fuck is this? He like, yo, that's that nigga Jinx, son. You don't ever heard of Jinx? He like, yeah, son, that nigga crazy, blah blah blah. And then uh -huh. the nigga was like, 
You know, then he was like, yo, son, but I'm going to keep it real. That nigga Jinx be into all type of drama in the Ville, all type of shit, bro. And I'm like, damn, but son mad young. He like, I know, son. So it's like, yo, with that, bro, you know, I want to ask you, like, how, how and why did you end up in the streets so young? Like, what was going on in your life that you that you found yourself in the streets, like outside at that young age? You got you got to think, bro. Real talk, I'm coming, I'm coming out of the shelter, bro. Real shit, bro. And this, what I tell any of them, like this is raw. This is it's the same story. You know what I'm saying? It's, not, it's the same. This shit don't never switch up, bro. For me, you know what I'm saying? It's moving from the shelter, son. Not having an older brother. Not having a pot still moving to the projects. I'm 13 years old so with who two you, little sisters. Who you, it was just you and your sisters in the shelter? Yeah, me, my sisters, and my mother. You know what I'm saying? So when a nigga get to the peas at 12, 13 with two little sisters and we going outside in the park, it's a different it's a different element around me as a kid in 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 the projects, huh? Like that naked. You feel what I'm saying? So we adapted to our surroundings. I'm a young man. Okay, fast forward, you get the deal and all that. So you're like, okay, a record deal. A record deal don't define the nigga still being a kid. I got my deal at 15. So I obtained something on a major scale at a certain time I wasn't even ready for. Not without the proper guidance. You know what I'm saying? So Where you landed when you when you first came out the shelter? In Tilden. On the first floor. Getting rocks thrown at my window. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How old was you when you when you came to Tilden? I came to Tilden. I had to be 12, 13, bro. And where y'all was coming from? We was coming from the shelter, but mm -hmm. I had lived originally in the star on, 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 on Saratoga and fucking and, and, uh, uh, Decatur Street and all that. You know what I'm saying? Which is, which is, it's the street, but you know, it's, it, it ain't Brownsville. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't that. So you knew people in the Ville when you moved there, or you ain't know nobody? No, I ain't know nobody. Nobody. Not a soul. I have no relatives that ever uh, originated in Brown. No cousins, no nieces, no aunts, no nephews, no none of that. So I'm the man in the house. I'm in the projects. Don't, just don't out there. And I rap. So like I said, you know what I'm saying? You, you add those elements of, of being there and obtaining something like a Def Jam deal at 15, like, I'm a kid. But I don't make no excuses in certain shit as a man, as a nigga get older, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking back, I could have made some better choices along the way. You feel what I'm saying? But that's the beginning of it, though. How, how dudes, like, how was the reception of you when you came to Tilden? Like, dudes liked you or they didn't like you? It wasn't, so we were so young, so it wasn't even like motherfuckers had to like a nigga, like, Nigga was so young, you just throwing out there with the kids in the park. So that shit wasn't, it wasn't like that nigga had to, you know, uh, come outside the crib fighting niggas and all that. Nah, niggas was young, niggas just came out and started shooting balls on the monkey bars. And yo, my name is such a nice, I'm saying we young like that. You feel me? But now, these is the people that I'm being around. And these young niggas is used to doing different shit that I was, you know what I'm saying? So... It's, it's different. I'm getting a little bit active into some of this shit. It's not real early, so, you know. And when was the first time where, like, you experienced something in Brownsville that was different? You know, something that could be spoke. We ain't going to sp speak crazy, but something that you remember that kind of, like, kind of let you know how how crazy Brownsville was. Oh, I I say like maybe. I want to say, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, before that, prior to that, someone I was in the shelter, you know what I'm saying? My, my man Bungie, you know what I'm saying? Got killed for his, for his, for his Nike stone on the train tracks and all of that. So I knew what was going on in the streets before I got to the bill because shit been going on since the nigga was even younger than that. But You say he got killed for his Nike, for his sneakers? Yeah, he got killed for his sneakers. He was in the seventh grade, you know what I'm saying? I, he was in the seventh grade. At 271 up the hill, he got killed for his ball please. That's why when games say that shit, my this man got killed for the ball I'm like, damn, that's crazy. My man James, uh, uh James Bond, Bungie, rest in peace. 
you got thrown on the, on the Ralph. I don't know if you remember that shit last back in the days on the, on the, on the train on Ralph Ralph Avenue on the A train, the C train. Where he fell you know into saying? the tracks or nah, he got they shot? Robbed him. Nah, niggas robbed him. You know, niggas robbed the four sneakers and threw him on the tracks. You know what I'm saying? So that was like the first thing that really affected me. You know what I'm saying? Before I even moved to Bradford. So you use that trauma right there to get into, you know what I'm saying? To the build, knowing how shit could get and all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but as far as in the build though, when I got, as soon as I got to the build that summer, a uh, kid got shot in his head. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say what it it was over, he got shot in his head over there at the Chinese restaurant. And I seen the Chinese man after it was all done, spray the water holes, like, it's like brains out there in the blood, you know what I'm saying? I saw at yeah, a young age, man, the, the fucking fire holes to, to wet the blood. It was thick, like, like ketchup, some, like, you know, barbecue sauce type shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I was like on my rollerblades. I ain't gonna hold you. I was skating. I was still going to Empire Skating Ring around it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was really roller skating. That's, I remember that night outside. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, young, young niggas skating and shit projects. But. Yo, but bro, listen, it's shit like that that, you know, we gotta speak about because, you know, in the Ville, you see a lot of shit in Brooklyn, period, in, in New York, period. In the streets, period, you see a lot of shit at a young age that, you know, you shrug that shit off and keep moving with your life and that shit be building up. And before you know it, you got a whole bag of motherfucking traumatizing experiences and shit that you saw been a part of. You know what, and though, that shit, though, you know what's so crazy, though, bro? As I look back, the only way to be able to grow something is to look at sometimes after a while, like... Except responsibility though too Cause sometimes we don't see shit and, and shit ain't get our attention You feel what I'm saying? And shit like that You feel me? And we start doing the same Same shit And the only way to grow something Is to understand Nigga that made mistakes And fell in love with doing that dumb shit That like, niggas thought that shit was cool though After a while You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like bro. that shit was some That shit meant something And all that when, You know what I'm saying? Niggas was misguided So You know Now that niggas is older Niggas is doing something it's, it's, it's niggas right to not, you know, just sh share the story of those things, but at the same time, let niggas know looking back, like, damn, a nigga could have did something different or should have peaked game where at the time you save yourself do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Without preaching to a nigga, telling a nigga nothing, nigga just like, yo, this type of time you're going to be on if you survive. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to be on that shit you want right now, pretty much. You feel mm -hmm. me? Yeah, and you know that neighborhood, bro, that, that neighborhood, Brownsville, is a lot, it's, it's a lot of neighborhoods that's terrible out there. But that neighborhood with those 18, 19 projects in a row, you feel what I'm saying? Like, we literally, bro, we, when we was teenagers out there and shit, like, in our 20s, I mean, I was out there as a teenager. Like, niggas was mentally ill, bro. Like, you be packed in those projects with so many motherfucking guns, drugs, killers, gangsters. You know, I counted how many people sent in my projects, let alone so I did some shit, you know, I've been down. I'm going on 10 and a half. Like, I'm going on 10 and a half right now. So, I got eight buildings with 16 floors in each of them, so. I did the math. If you take four people for each apartment, so, at average, so it's like 3,500 people on my projects alone on one half of a block, so. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, bro. Them, them, so, them, them, the, the amount of people in Brownsville, everybody trying to get the same dollar. Niggas living way, way below the poverty line. That shit is still the highest murder rate in New York City. Like, the murder yeah, rate so, done went down everywhere else except for Brownsville. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? And that shit is crazy, my nigga. But, yeah, you know, that shit yeah. is also, that shit is also a design that have niggas fucked up. And, yeah. you know, niggas be out there. You don't it that shit be that shit fuck up a nigga mind so much. Like I said, you can't even get a chance to think and clear your mind until wow. a nigga sitting in a jail cell somewhere. Then you realize, yeah, yo, what bro, the fuck? That's real shit. Nigga was <laughs> out there in the world up, bro. <laughs> bro the mother don't say you you talking some real shit, homie though, like Nah, I remember one time mother, Yo, bro, bro, in nineteen ninety nine, like knowing like nah, like ninety and like ninety seven. You heard a dude I was locked up with from my projects and how it nigga named BVD. We sat down one day. We sat down in the yard one day 
and just counted how many people we knew from Brownsville, from Howard, not from Brownsville, from Howard, that got killed. And it was at that time, this was 9-7. At that time, no yeah. matter of fact, this was 9-6. This was 9-6. At that time, we counted 200 motherfuckers. Damn, son. From the projects that was murdered. I ain't talking about car accidents or sickness. I'm talking about shot and killed, stabbed and killed in, in Howard Projects. That number probably tripled since then. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? But every projects in Brownsville, if niggas sat down and counted the numbers, it's in the hundreds of niggas that you know in this short little span of life, bro. Yeah, you right about that, so damn, son. I ain't even, you know what, son? Damn, son. I ain't even think of that, bro. Damn, bro. I ain't even really borrowed, son. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. You know what I mean, yeah. but... You know, for those that don't know, that's listening out there, you know, uh, Jinx done had some major, major shit out there. Had a crazy legendary video with Cool G Rap done worked on projects with Russell Simmons exclusively. You feel what I'm saying? Son got a crazy history with Russell Simmons and just did a whole bunch of shit in the rap game, man. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. Like, it seems like just yesterday, I remember one day we were standing in Langston Hughes. I don't know. I was out there with my cousin, the nigga Val, and we got up and we was all in Langston Hughes. And that was the first time. I think, matter of fact, we might have been even in the building. And... That was the first time I had I had met you in person and we started spitting bars and shit like that. And I just remember saying to myself, this dude right here is talented and smart, but this Brownsville shit got him going crazy. You yes. feel me? I'm like this brown. I'm like, yo, if this like son, I can't believe you survived. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You got that that. God don't make mistakes. You see what I'm saying? He put he put the the toughest battles to the strongest soldiers, bro. You know what I'm saying? And after, like you said, that's the sit down, son, to really reflect on the opportunities, the inspiration that it would be to to make a transition, son, and really live up to my full potential. It'd be a a good, you know, motivation or or or. or or a story for somebody to say, yo, damn, I bumped my head a million times, but I, I got it right. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I'm at right now. Like, you know, I'm, I'm focused on, on, on coming out there organized and together to, to really make an impact, bro. I had the time to reflect. You know, I'm on a different type of time. I come from a place where people don't make it out. You know what I'm saying? People don't make it out. People don't have the opportunities that I had. So, you know, I owe this to myself, but I owe, I owe the world, you know what I'm saying? To, to, to show that uh, a young nigga could, could go through some shit from a place like Brownsville, Brooklyn, and really go through it, you know what I'm saying? Like, have it all supposed to be on the surface, you feel what I'm saying? But allowing this, the, the, the streets and, and, and things of that nature to to fumble fumble those opportunities and gain them back that shit is like something that can inspire those who, who made mistakes and to, to, to keep pushing you know what I'm saying keep doing what they're doing that's what I'm on son. yeah bro you know it's like when you're given a second when you're given a whole second chance at life you feel me and you know some niggas is in that penitentiary. They got hundreds of years. They ain't never coming home. Ever. Hey, yo, you'd be surprised. Those be the most humbling dudes, bro. I, I was, you know, blessed with the opportunity to come up underneath a dude and his ticket underneath his wings. And he had life plus tense, you know? He started putting me on about the books and all that. Reading and all that. So once I dug into that, son, it opened up a whole different aspect to, to, to life, bro. That's why I'm doing the Gangsters Read 2. You know what I'm saying? Book club podcast. This shit ain't just some shit to be doing for likes and, and, and streams and all that. That come along with it. But like I said, it's a service. It's, a, it's an avenue, bro. Like, gangsters read too. You know what I'm saying? Like, we street smart. You know what I'm saying? We we read too. Don't don't block us off. And it's just to, to give reading a fly look 
You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's dope, something I'm passionate about. Or the mother, son. Yeah, bro. It's that that reading is the only thing that could save a motherfucker life, bro. Like educating and yourself. Just open your eyes. Yeah, yeah. you gotta think. You gotta think, bro. Last, you had the all guy culture uh, uh, timing. You know what I'm saying way way back the the, the, the grass and the roots and all of that shit, uh, vegetables and all that. Then you had the the industrial. You know what I'm saying the hard work, the metal, the the, the, the metal labs and fucking. You know, industrial shit. Then now you got the information age, bro, and and that's how you win now with the shit you know. So if you gonna win with the shit you know, information inside them books is a weapon. You know what I'm saying? You gotta open your yeah. mind to different shit and and then apply it. Yeah, cause the more you know, man, the more you appreciate your life and your health. You understand what I'm saying and shit like that, man. The more you know, the less stupid risks you take with your life, cause you start man, feeling. You ain't gotta make this shit. You ain't gotta make like you ain't gotta make this shit hard. Live, get money, treat our families, bro. Live. It's about living, not about killing, man. It's about building, not destroying, man. So the energy is in a whole other different space. You know what I'm saying? Even though those stories is real, I don't hold on to them shit to to you know drag that energy to where I'm going at right now. Come on. You feel what I'm saying? I speak on it, but overall, I'm in a whole different space and I'm, I'm promoting a whole other space. Shine, you know what I'm saying? Shine out the darkness, nigga. It's our turn, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of dudes out there from the Ville doing their thing now, too. You got, you got Bond with the Roll Rolls with his 41 artists, you know what I'm saying? You got niggas out there doing their thing. You got C Class out there doing his uh, YouTube shit. You got uh, Shorty Ivy, you know what I'm saying? Ivy from 1400, she out there doing her thing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's people out there. You got Big B's moving around. You see him. He running around. You know what I'm saying? He out there with Nikki. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, Val Dawn, Shannon Bridge. You got Val Dawn. You got little, it's a little Currington dude, Bruce Currington from my projects. He boxing. He doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Lucky Dawn back out there rapping. You know what I'm saying? Doing his, that's his son doing his thing. That's a fact. Uh, that nigga Shannon Briggs opened up a boxing gym in the Ville. I seen that shit. And hey, yo, I seen the nigga Mike too. The nigga Mike was in the hood fighting this shit. Yeah. So he fighting with the nigga out there. I said, that was lit. You know, I was pumped. I, mean, I ain't gonna lie, I was pumped when I seen that shit, man. <laughs> bro, bro, the mother, yeah, son. Bro. Nah, yes. there's a lot of legendary shit taking place. Now I mean, there's a lot of dudes that, you know, came out of the era of you know where we came out of that's still alive and you know a lot of these dudes changed their life because niggas is getting old enough to realize that this shit is a fucking dead end trying to play around in them streets niggas is just trying to live for their kids the for their wives teach us, though. yeah the street that, that shit teach us and i ain't gonna lie some of these books that you read from these niggas man they tell you man that street smart having street smarts is, is everything you know what i'm saying having street smarts to know about how to react in real life situations can't be taught in no classroom, you know what I'm saying? So I like I look at my hood like with we're given the opportunity and people like us that's 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 you know showing that you could do something outside the streets and that inspiring other dudes and dudes applying it from where we from son, we strong enough because we got the endurance and the resilience, bro. So so we, we we attack things differently. Dudes just gotta be exposed to to more different shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? We can't knock niggas for, for being how it is in that environment because, you know, that's just what it is there. It was designed. That's a whole fact. Let me ask you this, though, bro. How old was you and where was you when you realized that you had a talent to rap? So I, so I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I can say since I can remember, son. Like, like the back of the cafeteria in the sixth grade type shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, just having, you gotta say a few kids in the cafeteria and there's 40 kids, uh, 50 kids in there, you know what I'm saying? For it, so. and, and 30 of them is, 20 of them is in the back by the bathroom listening to you rap. You kind of feel like you got something in, you know what I'm saying? So, and that shit just, it just grew, you know what I'm saying? What rappers was you first exposed to? What's the first rappers you remember hearing as a kid? First rapper I remember hearing as a kid in the industry wise? Yeah, like just in the hood, wherever. Like who the first dude that you was like, oh shit, this nigga nasty. 
the music music wise, this shit go back to Big Warren G, Method Man and all that and the house but my mom's listening to music. You know, my mom's had me when she was sixteen, so I grew up with her too. So she was listening to shit that, you know what I'm saying? So like Warren G, Snoop, Big in the crib, you know what I'm saying? And with Hove. You know, I had my godmother living in Marcy, so so motherfucking, you know, on the weekends I go over there, I'd, I came up around Bleak and all that. You know what I'm saying? So I seen the whole from coming to age, reasonable doubt. So seeing that nigga in the projects and pull up to come get Bleak on the weekends, bro, that was, that was big. Like, oh shit. Yeah, this shit could be done. You know what I'm saying? Seeing him, bro. I seen, I read some shit a few years back where um you fought to give some time back or something. Yeah, I gave back ten. I gave back ten January two thousand twenty three. I had twenty five at first, which is three hundred months in the Fed, you know what I'm saying? But I gave back ten. I dropped it down to fifteen. I do like eleven, eleven and a half off that. Right now I got ten and a half in. So. I mean, how that shit was in federal prison, like, I mean, had you ever been locked up before by when you went to the feds? Hell no, my first, first time getting locked up, bro, I did six months, that's it, so that's the only amount of time I did in prison, so coming from six months to getting 25 years, that's a different, that's a different experience, bro. And, and what they gave you that 25 for, they just said it was drugs? Yeah, drugs, drugs yeah. and a hammer, 20 for the drugs, 5 for the gun. In Binghamton? Yep, in Binghamton, bro. Yeah, them niggas went crazy with that sentence. Yeah. But you know, like you said, bro, everything happened for, for a reason, you know what I'm saying? And coming from that space, getting away from it, and really having the time to, to think without all that shit going on, being at that young age, it puts shit in perspective for me. So, you know, I hate that I had to go through it, but I love who I've become. I love my understanding of life. I love my energy right now. I love where I'm at. And prison was the greatest growth spurt for me in my life. And I value it. You know what I'm saying? Not glorifying it at all. But I'm happy with God put me through and he kept me here for a reason. And I'm about to go out there and show the world what that is. You know what I'm saying? This shit is real talk. Real talk. Let me ask you this. If you would have never caught this case, You think you would have ever got out the streets? If I wouldn't have caught this case, I would have killed somebody or somebody would have killed me. Yeah, man. At the pace, at the pace that I was going in the space where I was at, you gotta think, what's gonna happen? You in the streets, running around the streets, and you and you, and you carrying carrying guns and all that, dude. Whatever the case may be, and, and you on that type of time, and you front line, and no matter what, whether you doing the music or not, you just gangster rapper, street rapper. And this is what it is. This shit, this shit happened. You know? You look back at it, this how, is this how I go. A lot of rappers is getting killed. A lot of rappers is going to jail for carrying guns. This shit ain't nothing new. Jinx story ain't nothing new. It just happened to a nigga that's really in the streets or really just from the streets. You know what I mean? This this shit is worldwide. This shit ain't just, you know, Browns, of course, because we one of those areas. This shit go down to New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, different states, different shit. Man, a lot of niggas don't make it. Some niggas make it. Some niggas don't, bro. The ones that do, it's our job to, to take advantage of it and show people they don't got to go through it the way we did, bro. And that's what I'm all about. I'm going to keep saying it, bro. That's the type of time I'm on. Take that pain, use it. I'm proud to hear you talk like that because I know, I know how knee-deep in the streets you was. Last, real talk, I appreciate you for saying that, bro, because, you know, we up here, we chopping it up for real. This shit ain't no, like I said, for the likes and comments. This is solid conversation. This this real shit. This shit ain't for no motherfucking reality show. This is reality for real. It's uncut shit. So, like, bro, being able to, to, to chop it up with you on, on this platform and, and, and kick it about some real shit and be able to do that from a place of, Sharing it with dudes, come on, bro. That's that's big right there, bro. We both we both made it in certain in certain ways, bro. Continue to work, son. Niggas is listening to us right now. 
That's a whole fact. You know what I mean? It's gonna be it's gonna be thousands and thousands of people that hear this shit and they gonna also be proud to hear you speak like that. And you're lying. And I know this too. It be that jail talk niggas be saying it is, right? So like applying it is, is everything, bro. You know, the job ain't over. Like I'm over here and you proud that I'm talking like this. Yeah, I'm proud for you to say that, but at the same time, it's a responsibility to go out there and act upon that way, bro. You feel me? Yep. And that's what I'm on. You know? Yep. So we can talk about this shit when I'm home two years later while we on vacation on a yacht somewhere like yo bro man we chopped it up when you was in there you said you was coming home like this I was doing my thing and look at us you feel me that's a whole fact that's we're coming back to fact. the hood doing something for the hood you feel me for the bill for the kids for the youth using your platform urban graduate give shit back to the kids at school time show up to the graduations you know what I'm saying go to the public libraries and Gangsters read two brain niggas out. You know what I mean? You know, what are we supposed to do, bro? Word up. Let me ask you another question, bro. Do you ever sometimes, like, on the course of that bid, did you ever sometimes feel like, if I would have just concentrated on this rap shit and said, fuck the streets, I would have been rich a long time ago? And a made nigga in this rap game? Because that's how we felt. Nigga Jinx could do it. But he caught up. Hey yo, homie. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? As soon as the cuffs went on. You feel know what I'm saying? Different shit, man. In the courtroom, of course. But you know, I'm a different type of I'm a different type of dude, man. I'm from a different place. Brownsville. So we fight around 30, bro. We don't we don't let those those negative thoughts, even though they reality, overtake us, huh? Now, now it's like rebuild. You feel me? So, yeah, nigga felt those things, but when you doing time, you gotta accept responsibility, but then you also gotta learn that life ain't over and, and channel that energy or that self pity, you know what I'm saying? And put it in a, in a positive, a positive place. Channel that. So, yeah, because I asked that question because the reality is it's another it's going to always be a a jinx that's nice as a motherfucker that spit fire that everybody want to see do it and he might not he might not make it to the penitentiary he might not even make it to the penitentiary he might get killed or he might get his lights turned out in the penitentiary and there's a nigga that's going to be listening to this right now that's that type of dude that's, that was that same age that, yeah, you know, yeah. the decisions you making now, you know what I mean? You don't know where you're going to be at 10 years from now. But some of us get a chance to get a second shot. And when we get that second shot, my nigga, you can't look back. It's crazy that you say that, bro, because every time I have an interview or something, or, they, or I get asked, like, yo, what would you tell a young artist? Bro, you ain't got to let this shit rap, nigga. But I would say it in a certain way to make him feel comfortable. Like, yo, I ain't saying you're a, you're a sucker uh, or you know, you, you're not. Uh, like, you a can't live it. Man. We ain't like, saying we ain't saying you can't live it if you wanted to, but you don't yeah, have to. Yeah, right. It, exactly. And then and then even those when you talking to those who live it, you know what I'm saying I'm to, talking to those too. You can't walk in two different directions at the same time, homie. Point blank. Period. That's the most stupidest thing in the world you could try. Walking in two different directions at the same time. So, at one point, you're going to have to give it up. Those who did, they got successful. Big got locked up. He realized, yo, listen, the same for me. Fuck that shit. Let me do this. I, I, I think D Rock took the job or something like that or whatever. I'm not sure the, the uh, specifics. But he got bagged before. He said, nah, I'm going to leave the streets alone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he stopped. After what? You know what I'm saying? Everybody take, pump the brakes, bro. And really focus on like I read, I read uh, what the fuck, adversity to sell by Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a fluent reader, and I'm in mean, reading a lot. And the Jeezy book, he talked about struggling with letting the game go, meaning the streets. But it was a it was a fork in a road situation. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he chose to go left and say, "Yo, I'm gonna leave the street shit alone, and I'm gonna go full fledged with the music." 
it's, it's going to come a time where it's not about living it. It's about sharpening the craft, doing what you love, and getting busy, getting to the money. You know what I'm saying? Entertaining people. That's a fact, though. These is facts, bro. You know what I mean? But you're doing the right thing, my nigga. You know how you said a little while ago, uh, sometimes niggas think it's jail talk. How that shit, how that shit <laughs> becomes not jail talk is when you educate yourself so much that when you touch down, bro, you know too much to go back to the penitentiary. You understand what I'm saying? And that's that's the best thing you could do with time is to get your mind right. Because it's, it's definitely going to be obstacles and surprises when a nigga hit the town. Hey, yo, ain't no big eyes, little news, man. Shout out to my man, Shane Laz, out there doing his motherfucking thing. Let's not get it twisted, man. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, even though you interviewing me, my nigga, I'm giving you your flowers, my nigga. It's inspiration. It's like you doing your thing out there. Like I said, other people that I mentioned earlier, son, that motivate me, bro. That it could be done. You ain't back in the penitentiary. You ain't in the streets. You know what I'm saying? You doing your thing, bro. You making it happen. You building a platform. So... That's inspiration for me. You from my hood, and I see what you doing. I'm like, let my nigga out there working. You know what I'm saying? I love hearing it and seeing my people out there working, doing what they doing. I'm like, yeah, they get to it. I'm gonna go out there and get to it, and we gonna go get to it together. You know what I'm saying? My people, as far as where we from, you know what I'm saying? Which we talking about earlier, Browns, but like I mentioned, everybody I mentioned in this interview, you know what I'm saying? I'm super proud of out there doing what they doing because they from my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? And. Uh, being on this platform, no, we from the same hood. We gonna talk about it. Brownsville, Brooklyn, Jinx the Jewelry. I know the story. 